Hello and welcome to Healthy. Today we are going to interview Alexandria Papadzaskis from Brown University who has collaborated with her team of researchers to bring us a very interesting and useful software known as webgazer.js. What makes webgazer.js an interesting software which can be applied across different fields? Well, this webcam eye tracking technology uses interesting applications to bring about a change in the way we see. Let us find out what makes webgazer.js an interesting application in the field of technology, medical science, health, gaming, as well as entertainment, and whether there is more to this than meets the eye. So webgazer.js is an eye tracking library. It uses webcams that are already present in laptops, uh, in mobile phones, tablets. And what it does is that um, it basically captures user interactions that take place naturally, like clicks, cursor movements, and matches them with a video that is uh, captured through the webcam. And uh, through regression models, it performs continuously predictions in real time of where we think that the user is looking at. All that happens upon the user's consent. So the user is asked if, if they agree to give access to their webcam. And once they do, then we uh, collect all those uh, user interactions. Everything happens uh, on the client side, so everything happens locally at your computer, at your laptop. And the only thing that is being transmitted, there's no video transmission or anything, so there's privacy. The only thing that is being transmitted are, is the information about the predictions um, that we continuously infer. Right. Now, we've talked about how... Uh that gazer js essentially is a democratization of mm -hmm. uh, eye tracking is this because it's cheaper or is this because it's more of a common man thing it can reach out to people more it can be applied more it can be easily used uh, what makes it so unique uh, in terms of its usp so i think it's a combination of both um of the, the factors that you mentioned so um one of the the reasons that we chose this word, the democratization, is because of the um, factor of how cheap it is. Basically, it's free. So anyone with a webcam now can perform eye tracking. Um, in contrast to what has been done so far with commercial eye trackers that cost tens of thousands of dollars and uh, are being restricted in lab studies, WebGazer uh, JS now enables people to do it from the convenience of their homes, basically at a very natural environment without even understanding that eye tracking is happening. So they can relax once they consent in giving access to their webcam and everything can happen naturally. And um, the developer gets those predictions and basically the whole revolution behind it and democratization is that we can move to a much more scalable basically approach this time where millions of users can have access to eye tracking. There is no reason to purchase any additional equipment as long as you have a webcam, which by default you have these days uh, with laptops and other mobile devices, then uh, we can perform eye tracking. At the same time, the library is open source, it's available online, anyone con can contribute to that and improve it, and anyone can see what's behind it. So, so do you envisage a developer community uh, evolving around this application mm -hmm. software? Do you, do you yes. think that there's going to be a lot of evolution and advancement from, say, maybe third-party developers? So, um, yes, that's my anticipation. And I've seen already on GitHub, which is where we host um, the code, a lot of people, um, what they do is that they start, basically, they like this project. So you we know that there is acceptance by the community, but there are also ongoing discussions where people discuss what kind of features we could add or what kind of, you know, sometimes it's, I don't agree with the licensing or I wish things were done in such a way or I think that this is a good idea and uh, how to improve the accuracy. So we know already that there is interest and um, I know for sure that third parties, even companies, startups have started contacting us saying that this is a technology that they wish that they could integrate in their um, uh, products, whatever the product is. It doesn't have to do something specifically with eye tracking. It is just the, the fact that we allow now this component to be integrated in many, many applications. So 
definitely a lot of uh, interest from uh, the developers and different types of developers that do different things. What about the interest levels in the entertainment industry or gaming or health? I mean, what are these applications going to work out as uh, if we have advancements in technology such as web gaming? Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of applications can um, jump out from this. Uh, as you said, gaming. So, I have um, on our website a, a demo with a very simple demo where I control basically a ball with my eyes. So, instead of using uh, a mouse or a special device that uh, basically someone can play games, immediately we can use the eyes and the whole thing can become, basically can revolutionize the, the way that we interact uh, with games. In terms of health, we envision that being accepted um, by people that have motor impairments, people that for whatever reason they cannot move, they have limited access um, basically to keyboards and devices that regular users can use. So eye tracking there can allow them to control and navigate basically their, through their browser. What was the essential research process that guided you? What were your motivations during that period of time? What was it like developing uh, WebGazer.js? How did it come alive for you? Okay, so uh, the main motivation was the process of democratization, right? We knew that eye tracking is a very powerful technique. We knew that it's useful for many, many different researchers, many companies. But we also knew that commercial eye trackers are expensive. Only a few uh, universities and companies can afford them. People have to come in lab. So we were trying to come up with something different, something that will allow any user basically to experience um, eye tracking and, and any owner of a website, because this was our focus, um, websites to be able to better understand their users. So we used past research. We are here to talk with Alexandria about why this is essentially more than just democratization because I get the feeling this could be the beginning of a revolution. So uh, what do you think WebGazer.js is going to prompt in terms of further research, further development, further growth in the field, in the area? So I can see um, growth in both, both in terms of research and um, in terms of the applications that WebGazer.js will um, now enable. So in terms of research, definitely I'm expecting a lot of researchers starting um, to examine what kind of models we can use to improve the accuracy of eye tracking, how we can make that faster, how we can make it lighter so that it can be accessible to even more devices, for example. Are you looking and at are you looking at making it more in terms of uh, a sophisticated eye tracker? Are you trying to better the model? Is it in, in, in what? Yes. Are you so uh, we definitely want to improve the accuracy, right? So right now we, we guarantee something between 100 and 200 pixels. For certain applications, that's good enough. For other ones, for example, for controlling a keyboard, which is you know, a few buttons that are pretty close, to each other, you might want to have uh, better accuracy. So I think that there is no um, strict like threshold that we want to accomplish, but the, the closer we get to the ground truth, the closer we get to accuracy that is pretty good or comparable to commercial light trackers, the better things will be. Of course, I cannot guarantee that we'll manage to go there, but I'm expecting a lot of interest um, from researchers that will try to push basically the frontiers and see how we can get better models to um, get these predictions closer and closer to um, the truth. So the basic the competition, now, and, uh, the basic competition here is the commercialized eye tracker, right? Essentially, uh, I mean, it's. I don't want to see it as competition because I don't think that um, for certain things, WebGazer JS can um, totally substitute commercial eye trackers. There are always special <laughs> research where um, commercial eye trackers can do things that. Um, unfortunately, a visible camera cannot do right now, visible light camera. But, um, yeah, there, you know, this would be the ideal competitor. Uh, right now, it's something that happened for the first time. We did eye tracking on the browser, so we only have to compete with ourselves and get better, um, in a sense. But the closer we get to the accuracy that um, the commercial eye trackers guarantee, the better things will be because the more applications will be enabled. So right now, it might be that the accuracy is, you know, 100 pixels of um, error. That is good enough for a website that, like HealthAim, for example, that 
helps to better understand how users view their articles. But for someone that wants to totally substitute the mouse and suddenly control fully their laptops with their eyes, we want to go one uh, step forward and we want to have more powerful um, models there that do the predictions. So for example, say if someone is paralyzed, will they be able to use this particular software to be able to read better with the help of course of somebody assisting them? Yes, so this is where we want uh, to move um, towards. So we want to actually enable people with uh, motor impairments, people with certain diseases like ALS that don't allow them um, to move, to suddenly have the access to, you know, just with a simple webcam, um, to be able to control uh, websites. There are already certain artifacts like software artifacts or products that people can buy to uh, control laptops and computers, but all of those are expensive. Not everyone uh, can have access to. So our goal is you know, democratization and especially for the health um, field to have and people um, with an accessibility field for people that have certain issues uh, when it comes to accessing uh, websites and controlling their uh, computers now to enable and allow them to use eye tracking where basically the predictions are going to be used as the controllers of their um, computers. That sounds like a perfect recipe for an interesting future. Thank you so much for your Hopefully. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for sharing what webgazer.js is all about. Hopefully we'll be able to see more of the development process and of the growth of this particularly interesting and intriguing software. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.